Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show episode 62, uh, live from the uh, Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorgatch, Sorgatron, producer of a sort for International Wrestling Cartel, Reggae Wrestling Alliance, Sorgatron Media, PittsburghWrestling.com. So much stuff going on. Zach, Finding Zach Gowan. I edited and did all kinds of fun stuff. But that's enough about me, other people doing things. Eamon, to please, at Eamon Payton. What is this? You're stuck with your mouth open. <laughs> no, no, I, no, I was are. just holding it open. <laughs> he's the, that, that's the face I make. I get, I he's make a, a commentator a, for Inspire Pro Wrestling, just coming off a hot show in Austin this past hot. weekend. And he's also, as spoiler alert, he's our guest tonight. But no, we're, we're, we, we actually, uh, for uh, circumstances outside of our control, we did not get an interview for tonight uh, locked down. Uh, at the last minute. So uh, I figured, you know, hey, he's a wrestling personality. And let's talk about him. I mean, you've been at this for a while, but we'll get into that. Also, the help, because it wouldn't be fair for me to just talk to my usual co-host and do an interview and that kind of thing. So I brought an honest-to-goodness journalist onto the show. Matt Carlins joins us at Mainstream Matt with one T. Mainstream Matt at blogspot.com. Some good stuff over there. How you doing, Matt? I'm all right, Sorg. It's nice to be here. I'm, I've come prepared with many questions about uh, global politics hmm. and um, other things for Amy to answer. So I'm I think you forgot which job you're at. Uh, this isn't Crossfire? I, I, this is I have no opinion of what's <laughs> happening in Syria or whatever is important. <laughs> Wow, that was a good pick for a <laughs> random country, though, I got to admit. Uh, I'm like, there must be stuff going on there, right? Sure. I'm sure it's There's shitty. Some, I don't know. Yeah. Um, There's stuff going on. And we just well, we just offended our Syrian fans on the podcast. Sorry. I'm sure there's indie wrestling there, sure. Anyways, uh, but we'll get into that. But hey, big thanks to Basic Sickness for the intro outros for this, basicsickness.com. Get that music for free over there. Great Pittsburgh sound. Uh, P- uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com is where you can find this. All kinds of other shows. Links to subscribe to them on stuff like iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. Uh, and so many flavors of pro wrestling discussion going on there. And you can also drop us a line. Let us know what you think of the indie wrestling discussions we're having. 412-206-WMS0 or Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem show.com and uh, of course follow us on twitter at mayhem show or uh, facebook and google plus wrestling mayhem show join all this stuff on there and we have a lot of really good discussions especially in the facebook group and about all kinds of wrestling there a lot of indie wrestling talk there as well so with that let's get into it so amen uh <laughs> Sorry, John. Hi, Eamon. Hi. Hi. I don't know this who you really are. This is really the most awkward thing. It is. It is. I, uh, I've done. I've done some like promotional interviews in the past, but never with like the guy I podcast with. <laughs> so, so be forewarned. Let's turn around. It'll be the weirdest episode ever. But no. Yeah, but it, honestly, you are. I think it makes most sense to to talk to you about this because you are. You know, as opposed to me, I'm very behind the scenes. But you're a wrestling personality. I, uh, yeah, is that I, weird? I, Have you not thought of yourself in this way? That, that's scary to think of, but yes. The uh, young whippersnapper. Maybe we'll get a little bit of history here. Uh, the young whippersnapper that started emailing the show, and we were so concerned because we started letting him on the show when he was yes. 15. And the Wrestling Man and, Show got and, a little and raunchy. And you had no filters and no, and you know. You no. Had to be- We've calmed down in our old age, haven't we, on that show? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a scarred, scarred individual, thanks to you guys. But, but and too, but so much scarred that he's in pro, pro wrestling to prove that. Um, but uh, let's get so so. What all? Let, let's first chunk real, real quick. What are your responsibilities now, currently, with Inspire Pro Wrestling? Is there anything else outside of Inspire that you do in in the wrestling world at the moment? Uh, cur- currently, currently not exactly. Um, right now, it's mainly Inspire Pro Wrestling. They're the guys that kind of. Uh, broke me in in a sense uh, uh i was hired to uh be the play-by-play commentator for them mm-hmm. um and i've gotten to assume a couple different roles for them as well like i um uh, run a majority of their social media um uh stuff like that um really any kind of odd job that they need of me i am usually the kind of person to um to to do it there's a lot of um uh our, on our website, if there's any like stories that, that need to be published or 
or anything around that nature. I try. I'm usually the guy that that's writing up a lot of that stuff. Um, mm. I try to get my hands in in as much as possible, um, and hopefully, I, in in an attempt to become multifaceted in the business, try to learn as much as possible. Mm. Um, and, and yeah, that's that's been really cool. Um, I but yeah, I've, currently it's only been inspired for wrestling. Uh, I think it's hard in, uh, being a commentator in the Texas independent wrestling scene because there's not a lot of need for commentators uh, because there's not a whole lot of people that are doing production uh, that would necessitate it. Um, it, it. It's it's just a thing that not a lot of people necessarily need. Um, uh, but I'm but I'm I'm very happy to be a part of Inspire Pro. Because uh, they're, like I said, they're the guys that broke me in. So it's, it's been great, you know, being part of that, that awesome. of that family. Very lucky, very lucky with with being connected with somebody really good breaking in like that. But I want to get back to that. But first of all, uh, let's bring this. Let's turn this into a real indie mayhem interview. <laughs> so, so, and this is the part that's going to make me feel old. What broke you into being a fan of wrestling? What's your earliest wrestling memory? As we oh, ask, Jesus. <laughs> Sorry for all the listeners uh, for when I for how I date myself. Uh, the first thing I I, I always knew rest of wrestling, but not never like really followed it. Um, but the one vivid memory I have of the first thing I ever remember is the build up to the Triple H Shawn Michaels feud going into SummerSlam 2002. Oh jeez. Uh, oh. I, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. It, it oh. was just a thing that I was I was flipping through channels one night, uh, and Raw was on, and it was the they had a big like back and forth sort of like via satellite promo thing because uh, I think like the week before was when Shawn Michaels got attacked in a parking lot and it was like super bloodied and and graphic. It was very much a graphic scene yeah. that kind of caught my eye. Uh, it, it had nothing to do with like the actual wrestling in ring, surprisingly enough. But um, yeah, I, I kind of just got hooked ever since then. Um, I don't know. It was it was always something that was on. I always I watched Raw every week. You know, you know, for many years it was WWE, and then I would get on the internet and extend to different like independent wrestling and 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 things like that and and. I don't know. It's it's something that I never really envisioned. Like from the point I've started watching since I was like nine or ten. Like like since then, like it's always been a part of me. Mm-hmm. It's kind of been like really intrinsically linked. Wow. And then, Sork, let me jump. yeah, go ahead, uh, Eamon, How um you you mentioned the internet real quick. Was that? Mm there from the word go for you as a wrestling fan or was this it, I'm, I'm trying to gauge like where we are in time with the internet and stuff no like definitely that. um it was probably when i was about 14 15 um when i uh, before i started with the mayhem show i frequented a lot of like message boards mm-hmm. and and stuff like that it was just because we we my family literally had a desktop computer in the middle of our living room and I was getting into wrestling. I've been in wrestling for a little while now, and I thought, well, I can probably search other things that have to do with wrestling, you know, just just kind of coming to mind. And and that's where I discovered the whole idea of message boards, and those message boards led me to stuff like Ring of Honor and Chikara and stuff like that. Um, that would probably be about 2007 or 2008 when that, that started really I started really getting into like the stuff on the internet and stuff like that um, and, and eventually I led my way to obviously finding the wrestling mayhem show on a on a uh, blog TV back back in the day oh jeez blog uh, and TV thinking like, and thinking like what the hell are these guys doing <laughs> and, and still to this day what the hell are these guys doing yeah well, but, but it was just so like I was like oh there's people talking about wrestling like mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're talking about Robbie. Well, were they? Cool. Were they? Uh, is it? I don't know. We're, we'll take another stab at this, and like for discovering this thing, because like really part of your fabric is this podcast. It and is doing it, this, it, and and hopefully I'll be able to touch on it later. But this mm-hmm. podcast is also, I think, a big reason why I got the job in the first place for Inspire. Mm-hmm. Um, but but no, it, it was a big part because I, you know. You, you, and Lunchbox and Doc Remedy and all these guys were just sort of like you were in your uh, uh, one of the rooms in, in in your house, just 
sitting down, sitting and talking about wrestling. And I was like, if they, you know, it, it, the internet gives everyone a voice. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you know, whether that voice is good or not, whether it's, you know, right or not, it doesn't matter. You know, that's the, the voice, you know, the voice is there and the opportunity is there. Um, and, but yeah, I started like emailing the show and, mm-hmm. you know, but like you said, eventually you let me on and yeah. to talk about stuff. Because people tend to graduate to the show from email. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's how we kept yeah, it alive so long because people were interested and wanted to be involved in it. And we're like, hey, let's see if they're good on a mic. You know what I mean? And, we, and we've tried people on. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And mm-hmm. we let them more and more and more. And then we become friends and we hang out on Monday nights, you know? Uh, yeah. well, let me ask. So at the time, as I'm as – I'm, crowdsourcing my own <laughs> info here but no but seriously at the time was there a lot of shows doing that you discovered at least were doing what we were doing in that i mean we're you know badly or in the same way or or definitely in in, in certain different ways i like, remember because i because actually i remember how i found you was because the message board that i was a part of did a show um yeah. where it was very it was actually like green screen Two guys like in suits, like behind the desks, like very like sort it, of kind of it, professional looking. Was it chair shot reality? No, it wasn't. Because <laughs> uh, that sounds like some of their early shows. Sounds like a yeah. dead ringer. For the life yeah. of me, I can't remember. But you guys like like the stuff you talked about. It was a little less vulgar, but you guys were like super similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were using um, they had video stuff too, but they were using talk show. Mm-hmm. And I remember that's how I found like I searched other shows on talk show. Right. Um, and but. I, I, yeah, there were. Other, I remember I would search like wrestling on talk show, and there would be like maybe like six or seven different shows about wrestling. Um, I don't know if many were as um, frequent or as on a regular basis mm-hmm. as as you guys were. Um, there were a lot that would have like an episode like once a month, and or or an episode here, and then like maybe like three weeks later, or you know, on very irregular schedules. And it was very much just like guys getting behind a microphone and talking about wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the more I, I think, obviously, people talk about the internet age and and how the internet's so you know linked to wrestling nowadays. You can't really escape it. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's just like going back to it. Like every everyone has a voice. Uh, there's more opportunity now than ever to you know have a have a podcast or have some form of something to where you can talk about whatever you're interested in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I, I do think there was a lot during that period of time. It, I don't think there's much, as many, there's as many podcasts as there are now. Now I see so much right. like podcast radio. And there's, stuff. there's a lot of better ones today too. A lot more there, better ones. Yeah. The, there were, there's very l- less amount of like, those ones I talked about that weren't on a regular schedule or mm-hmm. didn't follow a format or anything like that. Um, there's a lot more stuff that's like more stuff you would hear on like a, in, you would imagine in like a professional sort of setting. Mm-hmm. So what did, how did that parlay into what you're doing now with indie wrestling? Um, it's kind of a, it, it's, it's a link of a couple different things. Um, one of them being the show, obviously. Um, but uh, I was eventually moved to San Antonio from Corpus Christi uh, to go to school, which I'm still attending now. Um, and in Corpus Christi, there's not a whole lot of independent wrestling. Uh, there was for apparently for a period of time, but I think it was a time before I was a wrestling fan. Um, and I kind of missed out on it. Um, but I moved to San Antonio and then I realized, oh, there's more indie wrestling like in this area and more – names that I recognize and, and stuff like that. And I just started going to independent wrestling shows and, and San Antonio, if you look, if, if you take Texas into account, it's closer to places like Austin and, and Houston and, and places like, you know, Dallas isn't too far. And I just kept traveling and going to shows and, and visiting, you know, and, and meeting these wrestlers. Um, I remember there was a point in time where we were doing interviews on the main show and I started going around interviewing wrestlers on location and then just getting to meet guys and getting to know them. And I met um, Justin Bissonette, who uh, we had on our main show once to promote a, um, an Anarchy Championship wrestling show back when he was working for that promotion. Um, and that was how we met, was through him getting me inviting him onto the show. 
and after that we just kind of hit it off because we were very similar uh we had similar opinions and and i think he kind of realized that i was not you know not that much of a fan in the sense of i'm a no, I, I don't like to use. You are, I hate using the term, but I'm not a mark. You're not. Like you're I, not a fan. You're like like no. He's a fan. You know. Yeah, like like, like, like I, that, the fact. I think he saw that I cared a bit. Yeah. And and, and yeah. you know, had an interest. Um. So he would eventually uh, actually depart from Anarchy Championship Wrestling in early 2013. Um. And uh, me and him still talked and 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 you know we're we're always you know. Uh, sharing ideas and stuff like that. And I remember I went up to me and a bunch of other people were in a car with him going to a show in Houston uh, to watch. And at that point he mentioned that he was starting his own wrestling company called Inspire Pro Wrestling uh, and um, that he was going to be starting in the summer. And uh, I, I remember telling him, if you need help with anything, you know, I, I would love to help in any capacity. Like if you, even, you know, setting up, whatever I, I would love to help and i remember around the time when he left uh, acw he actually sent me a message once and and just talking to me and just bringing up the fact that he's like do you ever want to do anything inside of wrestling do you ever want to you know go to that point and i and i said uh you know i didn't want to be a wrestler because i wasn't athletic i had no i have no athletic background mm-hmm. um or anything like that um but i would love to do you know either ring announcing or commentary. That's kind of a dream of mine. Um, and he, he told me specifically that he really thought I was doing some great stuff on the podcast and stuff like that. Um, so, so fast forward to April, uh, he says, yeah, totally. I mean, we'll, we'll definitely find a place for you. And then I think like three days later, he messaged me asking if I wanted to do commentary. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a big moment for me because it, it, it really felt like everything sort of like fell into my lap and was like, this is, this is a dream, you know, slowly becoming realized. And I didn't know what, you know, the company was going to become. I didn't know, you know, how successful it would be. But I was very excited um, for for the prospect of doing something cool in independent wrestling. Awesome. So did you did you basically have like a – did you have a practice run when you were preparing to do your commentary uh... – work or, or I, I assume there's a lot of preparation that went involved obviously but like how, uh, how did you get ready for that first time th- there is um uh i don't know but i wouldn't say practice run there was a lot of studying that was involved um uh, I, I did message this and, and talk to him frequently before the show about um stuff i should study and um etiquette and and because it's not it was to me i wasn't really as worried about commentary as i was about just being in a locker room for the first time Mm -hmm. that was the scariest thing to me was oh these people that know you as a fan know you're working with them now and and you have to you know act a certain way because you know people have horror stories about wrestling and and locker rooms and stuff like that um so i was very worried about that uh luckily i was i was happily surprised um uh of the result of that but but it was a lot of studying going in um uh considering like you know source material and stuff like that uh uh, i he he told me to you know watch the likes of like a gorilla monsoon and 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 jim ross and stuff like that like the, the the traditional you know um uh top guys in that in that field uh he also encouraged me to watch a lot of a um uh world of sport uh, from Europe and actually uh, UFC hmm. because it's a much different perspective. And, that, and that's kind of like, is the, and that's kind of more the feel that he wanted to get out of it. I think so. Uh, uh, we do inspire pro wrestling. I think we have a lot of storytelling stuff as well, but we do try to play a lot to the athletic side as well. Um, and that's where UFC and MMA, MMA in general, just kind of thrive is that they focus on the athletics and they hmm. focus on, you know, a wrestler or a competitors, I should say, uh, strengths and weaknesses and, and, and strategy and stuff like that. Um, so that's what I kind of learned from studying that stuff. And then it's after that, it's just like making sure you know names of moves and, and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that, which I, I, I'm, I'm proud that I feel like I've gotten better at. I, I listened to earlier stuff and I'm just like, nope, that's not what it is, Eamon. 
<laughs> like I, it, it's it's a long process. It's, it's a very long process. Certainly, certainly. And um, you've been doing this since uh, I see your first show. Uh, the first Inspire show was just uh, 2013 uh, there mm-hmm. in July. So like you guys are just coming up on two years here in a couple months. Yeah. Um, so I mean, so have you? Are you? Do you feel like you're getting in a comfort zone at this point? I do. Um, I, I've been very happy with our work in general, just in the company. Um, it's also been nice because, you know, this was my first time ever doing anything in wrestling. But also, um, I got to work with Brandon Stroud, who's this is his real first ever time working in wrestling as well as a ring announcer. Um, you know, uh, Max Meehan, who we've had on the Indie Mayhem show, also. Um, first time ever writing for a wrestling company, um, you know, Lex Librand's first time ever doing videography. You know, the, the, we have a lot of people on our show that this is their this is their first time, and it's a lot of trial and error, and it's a lot of getting a feel for things. But I also see there's a lot of people that are passionate about what they do, um, and I hope that comes across in my work. Um, I, I I do feel like. I, 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 I like to think that I have come a long way. Um, this past Sunday, uh, I got a really big compliment from a, from a fellow wrestler um, just, about, just about the fact that, I, that he could tell that I put care into it. And, and that's really all that I think matters. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that, that's, I think, one thing that really shocked me in the early goings was people were very happy with my work because they, told that I, they could tell that I cared. And they could tell that I studied slightly. Like I had wrestlers come up to me and be like, oh, my God, I watched back my match from so-and-so show. And you remember this part of the story and this and, and all this stuff. And I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, like that's kind of my job, you know. Um, it, it, it's it's really humbling. Um, and and I, like I said, I work with some phenomenal people that really support me and, and, and nurture my ability to learn and, and grow and get better. And, and I – and that's from staff members to wrestlers to, you know, the, it's, it's really been an amazing, you know, clo- like you said, close to two years. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Um, geez. <laughs> they keep yeah. hey, about are you, um, you mentioned a couple of names that you were looking at. Do you think you pattern yourself after any specific announcer? Um, is, is there something that you try to like, maybe it's kind of like your center that you work out of? Um, I, I don't, I don't necessarily try to imitate or, or replicate another another um, announcing figure. Um, in some of the latest Inspire Pro stuff, uh, I've been commentating with another with a uh, commentator. He's also done a lot of managing work in Texas. His, his name is Nigel Rabbit, and he's really a we we've developed I think a really good like sort of face heel dynamic and he compares us to like Gorilla and Bobby in a sense mm-hmm. um, and and that's really that's really a big compliment and and it's allowed me to learn you know how to work with a heel and and, and that kind of stuff um, one of my big things that I, I get a lot uh, uh, noted about uh, is my enthusiasm uh, which is sometimes good and sometimes bad because I think some people really enjoy that I'm enthusiastic about the wrestling match that's happening. Uh, there are times where, I, especially in the early shows, where I am too enthusiastic and I need to calm it down. Um, a lot of people uh, compared me, and, and this was the biggest compliment, both from the fact that I really look up to him, but also that I got to work with him, uh, was uh, Bryce Remsburg. A lot of nice. people said in my early goings, they remind me of like Bryce's commentary in like, Chikara. I can see that. Uh, I can definitely see that. Uh, and, and, and like I said, the fact that I got to work with him this past October was a dream come true. And, um, and, and interview him here on the show. And, and yeah, exactly. Um, uh, very true. Um, he's a guy that I do really look up to and, and just, just cause of the fact that, you know, he's sort of, I mean, obviously he went the referee route, but you know, the fact that he's somebody that just, you know, wanted to be a part of wrestling and, and did it and you know he he's a really good um uh he's a big role model for me personally but um uh yeah you you always i think take certain things from certain commentators from the past but you never i i've never really tried to just immediately duplicate someone um there's a lot of maybe like one liners or one phrase phrases that I may in, unintentionally use just cuz it it comes natural as like a, oh this you know 
is something you would place here. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't try. I, I try my best not to duplicate too much. Awesome. So, um, where is so so you've been doing this so far, and and and, and you know, got in a really good spot here. What are what are your goals for this? Where where do you want to go from here? Do you have any kind of trajectory for like what does Eamon do? Like you know, we kind of talked mm -hmm. like Joe, you know, Joe Dombrowski is kind of doing some things outside of uh, commentary, for instance, to get Joe Dombrowski out there, right? Uh, mm -hmm. is, is there anything aside from this show, say that 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 you kind of would like to delve into in the future? Uh, I, I think one of one of my big goals. Um, and I love Inspire Pro, and I think, and I'm definitely, I will work for with them and for them until uh, they don't want me to work for them anymore. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I, I do think a big goal for mine is to at least get booked one other place, mm -hmm. because I feel like that's validation to say that somebody else saw your work and was like, I want to work. I want you to work for us. Not just like the guys that said, eh, I think you might have something. Let's give it a try. We're starting something new. Like that's a different yeah. level of trust than you come over here please you know yeah the, the the fact that you you know gain a reputation um would be big uh other than that i want to my, i really do want to learn as much aspects of the business as possible um you know whether that's you know in an, in an announcing capacity or or any other capacity uh, i don't know if i ever will get to book which i kind of am happy about that because I, I i've seen firsthand what it's you know like sort of watching people book a show and it is extremely difficult mm -hmm. and i wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy nope. um but yeah uh learning as much aspects of the business as possible and then working with bis and max and all these guys they've done a really good job of being of teaching me as much as you know you know teaching me things like um you know teaching me like this is how you know we run down a show and, and how we time things out and stuff like that. Like that's been really cool to sort of, to sort of learn, learn on the job really. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I don't know. I feel weird asking you what you're watching these days, but <laughs> because you got to know what I'm watching. These but days. for the real quick, just in case this is the first time somebody's listening or just the real short list, uh, you don't have to get too much into it. Uh, give me like your, your top few, like this is the stuff I'm really excited about right now. Um, I'm like most others immensely excited about Lucha Underground. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they have a real possibility to be the next big top thing. And it's really great watching them and, and learning the aspects of storytelling and sort of, you know, the, the subtleties and, and, and stuff like that, that really do go sometimes underappreciated. Uh, there, there's a, there's something that I, you know, watching can learn from that and, 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 and gain from that, I think. Um, obviously, them. Obviously, NXT um, as much as possible. Uh, I watch. I tend to watch a lot of Japan um, uh, stuff and and sort of study. You know, Japan is usually really good because even though there's a language barrier, you can really understand sort of the rising and falling in in, in action and how that plays into a match. Um, I've got. I think one of the biggest pieces of advice that I got was um, to understand how a match is put together, and and there's certain things that you don't, when you're watching a match, you don't really pay attention to mm -hmm. until somebody eventually pointed out to me. It's like there's a part where this happens and then it's followed by this, and and um, now when I watch wrestling matches, I can't, I can't not see it, <laughs> um, and it's a, it's a good thing. It's also a curse. It's like it ruins um, it for you, and I. I I, I see that. I definitely. I think it's part of the the friction you and I have had recently, because um, I think true, yeah. I think you're having trouble seeing past that, and you're it, still. It's, it's, it's very hard to not like watch certain parts of a wrestling match. Certain parts that not a lot of people would even recognize. Right, and right. And say, oh, this is why he did this. Yeah. Because they're setting up for something else. Right, you right, know? and especially, and I see that being so like literally close to wrestling <laughs> over the years. Yeah, with exactly. Video work. Um, you just look at those details and you just can't unsee or even seeing how wrestling works, like seeing some of the training being done. You're like, oh, that's how they 
do that thing and that's why that looks like that you know now that's in your head you know yeah. you know when somebody's like oh that looks like it really hurt like no actually you kind of tucked his thing and it worked out and the other guy's working with him you know and, and you start breaking that down in your head that's why i think it's very important and his whole other <laughs> philosophy thing let I me mean, not for the case of the interview of like just saying okay i'm just gonna be a fan right now <laughs> you yeah. know uh, and it, be able to it, separate it, it, yourself it, it, for yeah. something like that you know yeah, it, it's extremely difficult sometimes to just sit back and be a fan of it too, just because you to understand like the reason why they do things, the reason why fans are reacting a certain way to a move or, or, or an act, a piece of action. Um, it, it's so interesting, and I'm, I'm glad I learned it because it it, it, it did help me improve on my my commentating. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's very hard to watch wrestling now and not see certain things. Certainly. Certainly. All right. And of course, uh, what is the best and worst thing about working with indie wrestling so far for you? Um, the best thing about working for independent wrestling uh, is to see, I, I think a lot of people question like, well, why, why do wrestlers do this? Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 when I was a, when I was first time watching wrestling, my mom was not a big fan of it. Mm -hmm. And, she really just didn't understand why anyone would ever do it. Mm -hmm. I remember watching uh, The Wrestler with her when it was in the theaters. Oh, that's and a, the that's end rough. scene happens, and she's like, he's an idiot. Why would he do that? And it's like, you just don't get it. Like, like not in a bad way, but she, like, she just didn't get it. Um, to get to see wrestlers succeed and to get to see how passionate they are and how much they put into their craft is really – not to – coin a phrase but it's inspiring uh it, it's great to see um people become successful um i've gotten to become friends with a lot of great talented people uh in this business and when they gain success it, it's really fun to see um so that would be one of my best things the worst thing i think and this is going to sound really terrible for me because I, especially uh, my opinions on like mania and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> seeing like, seeing fans who, not their faults, but they, but they don't understand what goes on in the back and, and they don't understand all that goes into booking and running a wrestling show and a wrestling company mm -hmm. and being critical mm -hmm. on certain things. It, it does upset me at times because I've seen how hard people work and I've seen people try things and fail and I've seen people, you know, not obtain what they want sometimes. And to see some fans, you know, sort of respond to things not in the best way is, is very much I, – I now understand why wrestlers get so upset sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I now understand why the whole mentality of well, you can lace my boots or, or get you you know you couldn't last a minute in the ring. It's like yeah, they're actually kind of right because <laughs> there is so much that goes into it. Um, I couldn't last a minute in professional in an actual professional wrestling wrestling capacity. Um, I think what professional wrestlers do are phenomenal, um, and. For that reason, I think people should really realize that they don't understand all the intricacies of what goes on in the back. Mm -hmm. So that that's the closest thing I can think to like a worse thing. Awesome. Well, uh, I don't know, Matt. You got any last questions before we we move into a different topic here? I, I just have a uh, like a, just a random general question since I consider Eamon an expert on independent wrestling. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to. <laughs> You might find this difficult or easy. Who's the best independent wrestler out there right now? Hmm. Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> Jeez, that's a really good question. Um, best independent wrestler right or, now. Or even the guy, this is the guy you or should you look out for. couch it at his, any way you want. Maybe the best that you yeah. personally had a chance to call their matches. Someone should slight anybody. You're going to be like, best I, best I worked with or guy you should look out for popping up somewhere here or there um if i if i limit it to best i work with um he's a guy a guy who i don't think gets a lot of recognition i i think he's starting to get a lot of recognition now but cons as far as like in the texas scene he's he was never con con considered to be like the breakout guy like an ach or, or someone like that 
But um, Dirty Andy Dalton mm -hmm. is probably one of my favorite wrestlers. I have not watched a match of his where he hasn't entertained me. Um, here's the thing about independent wrestling, and, and I love promotions like Ring of Honor and PWG and stuff like that, but very few have really great heels and people who you absolutely, in a heel capacity, despise. Uh, and Andy has, I think, perfected that. Um, I cannot see him working. I, I've I've heard of him like working face at shows, and I'm like, why would anyone book you as a face? You are the biggest, best heel in this state. Um, he is really kind of a rest. He's he's gotten in amazing shape, um, uh, especially this past year. Um, he puts on amazing performances, and I think he's somebody that will be recognized eventually. Um, if you haven't heard of him before, you need to watch him and, and, and see his work because it's something, it's something else. Um, as far as indie wrestling in general goes, um, this, it's, it's kind of like a subsection of it, but I think women's wrestling in independent, in independent wrestling has gotten amazing. Hmm. Uh, I think it's the best it's ever gotten. Um, the list of names like an Athena or a Kimberly or a Candice LeRae or, or, you know, constant others who very well should be on the main stage um, are coming out of the woodworks and, and are proving themselves and, and, you know, breaking barriers and, and having matches that people matches, having matches that draw and, and matches that people want to see. Um, there's more than a men, you know, the ones I can even think of. Um, that that's something that really comes to mind when it's like the best stuff about independent wrestling right now. Like that's where I kind of think of. Um, but there's so many really great wrestlers and really great um, promotions that are popping up um, that are just trying something different, and and that's always really cool to see. Um, I think people thought wrestling was going to die off eventually, or wrestling was going to fade away uh, around this time, and it really yeah, I don't think has. I think it's honestly, if anything, gotten better. Nice. Nice. All right. Well, of course, check out everything at Amen Two Please on Twitter, uh, mm -hmm. Inspire Wrestling dot com, Inspire Pro Wrestling dot com, uh, for everything going on there. And of course, everything is on Smart Mark and, and a couple other outlets for you guys on DVDs. You can get all those links over there and check them out if you're uh, around Austin. So yeah, uh, so there, there's also hopefully hopefully we'll be able to announce soon. There's some other ventures where you can buy certain things from us. And nice. we'll be able to talk about it eventually. So Support. there's some cool stuff happening in the works. Awesome, awesome. Good, good to hear about that. I, I love seeing this 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 group this group grow down there, uh, and do something really cool. Um, so speaking of which, do you want to say a couple words about the show this past weekend? Uh, any highlights for you out of that? I do. Um, I kind of talked about it last week, but this was our our phenomenon phenomenon event. Uh, happened uh, this past Sunday, and it was although the although end. although just it would be awesome if you did have a Menomina event. <laughs> I'm just gonna call it, that. That's gonna be a horrible Menomina. hashtag to try to get spread around. <laughs> How do you spell hashtag. Menomina? I don't know. Maybe the spelling and oh, it's, <laughs> it'll be bad. Um, but it was at the tail end of South by Southwest, which mm -hmm. is obviously a big thing here in Austin. So it was really a kind of make or break show for us because. We wanted to see if we could draw um, with this, you know, kind of stuff, um, and we did. We 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 had a really good crowd, uh, and also, I feel like it was our best, like consistently, match quality wise, like show, like up and down the card, mm -hmm. and we didn't have any like fly ins. We didn't have any talents from like out of state, really. Um, very few. Um, it was really much just our roster and our talent. And they shined huge. Um, the street fight main event between Dirty Andy Dalton and centerfold Matthew Palmer was absolute insanity. Uh, there was blood. There was hair that was cut and thrown around the ring. Jeez. Uh, there was a broken table, broken ladders. There's a video that's going... Uh, the uh, Matthew Palmer basically executes a double underhook pile driver from the second rope on a ladder that was perched on the turnbuckle ropes. Uh, I've seen more videos, like Instagram videos of people shooting it than I've seen of anything ever, <laughs> um, of so many different angles of it. Uh, it was an insane match, uh, and and per the stipulation, and per Andy Dalton winning the match, Matthew Palmer sadly must leave Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, which is very sad, because I, I really do enjoy that. Um, 
uh, unfortunately, do uh, Andy Dalton seem to have gotten his way in his in his in his beef with uh, Matthew Palmer. But there's a lot of really fun stuff on that show. Um, I encourage you to check out um, when the DVD comes out. Uh, two friends of the show uh, had a match: Steve Arino and uh, Gigolo James Johnson. The legitimate funniest match I've ever called in professional wrestling. It is the <laughs> most insane, crazy, hilarious thing. Um, so that's a thing you should definitely watch. Um, another friend of the show, well, two friends of the show in a match, uh, Keith Lee and Thomas Shire. Keith Lee's another one that you need to watch. Um, he is goddamn amazing. Um, there's a video eventually somewhere, I think it's on Vine, of from the match where he does a corkscrew cross body to the outside. Keep in mind, Keith Lee is a good 350 pounds. Um, he's inhuman and amazing. And he actually won the Pure Prestige title on that night, which is uh, a, a great honor for him. We're, we're very happy about that. Um, and overall, it was a really great show. Like I said, we, we drew a good crowd uh, and, and the crowd was into everything. So it was definitely really fun. Um, our next event's not going to be until May 31st. So we're taking a month off, but we're coming back with a super show, which is in their blood too. Uh, which is going to feature uh, a lot of great talent. It's um, We're crowning our first ever XX Division champion, which has been a big focus for us, uh, building the women's wrestling roster on our shows. Um, it will be either Athena, Jessica James, or Delilah Doom that will become the first ever XX Division champion. Also, um, Andy Dalton will be wrestling ACH for the Inspire Pro Championship. And uh, the Inspire Pro debuts of Joey Ryan and Candice LeRae, which I'm extremely excited about, the world's cutest tag team. <laughs> uh, we'll be coming to Inspire Pro on May 31st. And, and tickets for that event go on sale this Friday uh, at InspireProWrestling.com. So definitely go go check that out because you're not going to want to miss the show awesome. in the slightest. Awesome. Uh, well, it, and we wanted to touch on something here. And not so I, – I don't know. Is it indie wrestling technically? It, 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 it's, it's, um, it was actually at an indie – show in mexico so okay. I think it qualifies okay so but, but either way I, I thought this you know we were talking wrestlemania on wrestling mayhem show and i wanted to kind of separate that from the conversation keep that where that is for wrestlemania and uh you know i feel like this is more appropriate especially the kind of stuff and more intricate we talk about wrestling uh of course people may have uh talked uh you know you heard about the uh, uh incident with Rey mysterio and actually manic involved with that as well in a tag team match and, and uh, uh, um, extreme or uh, T Gray Uno and TNA or Extreme Tiger was also right. Uh, involved. Right, and, uh, and and the passing of and please aim in with the name. <laughs> uh, 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 Paraguayo Junior or Hijo del Paraguayo mm-hmm. um, uh, sadly passed away in the match uh, from uh, med- from what it's being reported from the uh, the uh, autopsy was that um, uh, it was. Uh, uh, cardiac arrest caused by um, a spinal issue. Basically, um, Rey Mysterio drop kicked him into the ropes to set up for the six one nine, and the whiplash uh, from going into the ropes caused him uh, to suffer spinal damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it was a well, obviously it was from a long term sort of you know thing. Right. Uh, Paraguayo had been wrestling for a good while, and and he was considered one of the top stars of Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, so so this is a very sad uh, uh, instance. And, and I've uh, looked, very, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I would say I, I've looked at this a, a, a few times, and you know, some people are you know, uh, you know, given their given their kind of comments on it and everything, and and, and I, you know, we talk about kind of that the, before that trust, you know, and mm-hmm. even even on Facebook, uh, we had you know uh, somebody on there saying, you know, I learned that any move, no matter how trivial, could be threatening. Right. Yeah. Uh, a bulldog that a bulldog off the ropes. That was just the simplest thing they did so many times was the thing that that paralyzed, at least for a time, Buff Bagwell, for instance. Right. Yeah. Uh, a, not a terribly dangerous movie just caught it the wrong way, you know, and that's the stuff that's scary uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff. If you're involved as a wrestler and I, and I mm-hmm. wonder how I wonder how much you know, I wish we had a wrestler on the show this week to kind of discuss like that contingency. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, to get kind of more more of that idea stuff, um, but uh, you know, and, and, and I know there's like there's stuff about like you know, Ray Mysterio's been looked at for manslaughter. I really hope. I I, I don't I, I don't see, I don't see anything coming of that. But then I, it's uh, Mexico, so uh, 
you know, you never. This seems very much like a freak accident. It does. Uh, it, it is. Or the the only thing that's going to come into question, I think, from this scenario was uh, there may be some stuff about like malpractice uh, from the from the way he was uh, uh, handled. Uh, he was carried out on a on a uh, uh, basically a wooden board. The reports were that because somebody got injured earlier in the night, the stretcher was already being used. Which is why that why that occurred, which actually is very extremely unfortunate. Um, and it's unknown whether you know stuff could have happened to you know prevent him from losing his life. Yeah. Um, but this is a very sad situation, and I think the Rey Mysterio like being uh, there was a lot of news stories that like mentioned like Rey Mysterio killed a wrestler with the six one nine. It's like come you know this this it's very much an over exaggeration of something that was an accident that could, like you said, could very well happen just from some a, a mistiming or just something going wrong. You know, it, it, it's, and it's extremely unfortunate um, uh, that it occurred. Right. Right. Uh, Matt, I, I, I think you've probably looked at this a bit, uh, at least on the board and everything. Mm-hmm. Everybody's been commenting. Uh, what are your thoughts on this uh, unfortunate incident? I uh, just um, wonder, like, how independent promoters will look at this going forward, and if there's going to be any kind of like reevaluation on their part of like, are we doing enough to make sure that the medics are in place, that they're close enough to the ring, that if there's an emergency, they could be there quickly. Um, just what Aim had said, you know, are, are you know, you you someone gets stretchered, you know, they have to use a stretcher to take somebody to the back, you know, that's. You, you you hope that you never have to use the stretcher once during an entire uh, wrestling show. So when you have to use it once, you don't think that you might have to use it again. But in this situation, obviously, they did. Um, so for me, I kind of I kind of hope that maybe there's something, if there's anything positive that can come out of this, that um, that maybe there's a little bit of um, yeah, basically, that there's just a little bit of a, a reevaluation and a double checking of sorts to make sure that the um, that the promoters are looking at everything that they're doing to protect the wrestlers um, as they try to protect each other in the ring, and make sure that when the worst happens, that they're ready to respond. And um, you you pray that um, if all the right things are in place, that hopefully they could save a life um, the next time something like this happens. Certainly, certainly, real unfortunate. I, I again, I don't think. I, uh, other than that, with the with the stretcher, I, I don't think anybody in the ring people saying, "Well, hey, the match should have stopped." And and I think initially, uh, you know, your your tendency is to, "Oh, hey, he's knocked out." When got knocked out of him, and you move on, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people the, saying, "Well, the, it's, think about that video." Um, to to see that, uh, to, to, for me watching it the first time, to see Rey Mysterio. You know, halfway through the six one nine, to recognize something's wrong, mm-hmm. just like abort that move in mid motion is is amazing to me. Right. Because you know, as as just as just a fan who's because watching he, it, you kind of like, okay, what's happening here? Right, what's right. going on? But uh, amazing in a way to see that how quickly those guys could recognize that there was something right. And, that was not right. And, and I made some comment about like it's kind of scary and confusing, and people don't know how to re- react initially when because I, I have been front and center a couple times now. Uh, f- thankfully, uh, only people being knocked out and maybe getting a mm-hmm. concussion. Uh, the one incident, uh, Greg, Gregory Iron during a, a prime wrestling uh, taping, I was ringside, uh, you know, with the camera, and uh, it, it was he took a power bomb stiff and. It ended right there, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was unfortunate. Uh, G. Raver took another uh, bad, you know, just a bad drop, and, and I think he just bumped his head and got knocked out uh, at an RWA show. Uh, you know, we also in the chat, of course, I know, so I know he remembers that scary moment what we had there. Um, and and there's a tendency of like, okay, he's knocked out for a sec, maybe we'll come back. This happens. This happens in matches, right? You, you somebody will get knocked for a loop because they took a move wrong or harder than anticipated and move on uh and 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 you want to keep the show going right and if you don't have to until you're like no we can't get going and maybe you'll try some something or another and then you realize so 
this has got to be the furthest thing from anybody's mind that's in a ring. Mm -hmm. And to go from there to what happened. And uh, I feel for everybody involved in the match, first of all. Oh, yeah. Especially Mysterio, because he's the one that did the move. Um, you know, one, one thing, and I think I agree with this, that this seemed like more of a the ropes did it. Right? Yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was the whiplash. Because it was, he got, he got drop kicked, and you're, the move should be you fall into the ropes. And I've actually been paying a lot of attention to this because I look at the way he was in. I'm like, oh, he, he caught his neck because he went up like this. But anybody, in, and I'm, I'm seeing some kind of mid-2000s Rey Mysterio matches where they're doing the exact same thing. And look at the way. And really the way they come is like with their arms pits over the ropes. Yeah, yeah. Almost that takes sort of the it. chest out. Yeah. So, I mean, if nothing would hit the neck. And obviously the ropes in WWE are a lot stiffer than what was in that video. So I think it was a combination. The like it looks like he did get flushed that drop kick a little bit, mm -hmm. but like a combination of between that and the way he hit it, and I can't. I, did he just do a bad move under the ropes? Was it something he did in the move, or was it just maybe he wasn't expecting to hit the ropes like that, or it was just a bad bounce of the ropes because there was other things happening in the ring at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. It, it's it's crazy. Freak thing, like I said, and and a damn shame, a damn shame. And I and yeah. um, and, and 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 I hate that there are people like kind of not taking this seriously. You know, oh, wrestling, you know, stupid. Something happened. Right? Somebody somebody posted this video on my on my personal page with no yeah. explanation, and it's all in Spanish. And I'm like, you just posted a guy dying on my page. Let's just get rid of this. You know. Yeah. Um, whereas on, of course, the group, we had a lot of context and discussion over it where, where it needed to be. So I don't know. There's a lot of like tough questions. I mean, there's tough questions for when you're a fan on the outside looking in and, and you see something like that happen, you start to ask yourself, you know, why did this happen? You know, is this something, you know, all sorts of crazy stuff, you know, why am I watching this where someone could you know, could, could get hurt like this, but mm -hmm. it, it's all part of the shock. You know, you're in shock because you can't believe that this thing has happened. Um, and that's just from watching it, you know, on a video, you know, 24 hours later, a thousand miles away, you know, and you're not even, you know, one of the performers or a fan who was in the crowd, you know, I can't imagine like the confusion in the crowd too that night. It just oh yeah. Had to Certainly scary. I am. Um, you know, when, when Misawa, um, famously <laughs> died in the ring in Japan, it was another kind of simple thing, right? It was like, like a backdrop suplex yeah. steal, you know, but so it was taken, taken the accumulation so of damage over the years. was such that I, it, you know, it's, it's awful. Um, but you, you, you just got to hope that, like you said, that maybe something hopefully positive can come out of this. If, if one wrestler says, wow, my, you know, something didn't bug me, maybe it's time for me to check. You want the wrestlers to be like Edge, who was lucky enough to find out that, you know, he was maybe one bad landing away from and, the, and that's the Something other thing. That's terrible the, happening and getting the chance yeah. to walk that's away. The story, that's you know? the story we're used to, isn't it? Is, oh, Stone Cold got a neck injury. Oh, he's back six months later. Oh, John Cena got a neck injury. He's on SmackDown the night in Pittsburgh. He's hanging out yeah. backstage the day he had surgery out here for SmackDown. You know? I mean, it, it's, it's an interesting dynamic because I kind of – I kind of see both sides with wrestling fans. They, mm -hmm. they kind of see like, well, you know, sometimes they don't really comprehend it. Uh, I will say in contrast, uh, I mentioned before with the Inspire Pro Wrestling thing that uh, the video that's been circulating of uh, Andy Dalton getting a double under her pile driver on like a propped up ladder. We had a lot of comments from people being like, this is what's wrong about professional wrestling. This is unsafe. This is, mm -hmm. you know, blah, blah, blah. And I can firmly say that those two men walked on their own accord. <laughs> Yeah. And they and the latter spot really wasn't a or big even, deal. Or even that that the one that the intergender thing we had from a few weeks ago, right? Yeah. Uh, both yeah, of right. them are in on the idea. <laughs> you know, yeah. you don't take moves like that <laughs> involuntarily, typically. You know, even though it was a bad landing, and maybe he threw her a little more, 
but she was in on it. She was complicit with that, with taking a headshot and all the mm-hmm. stuff that you're like, Ugh. and you know, it's not any promoter saying, "Hey, go out there and bleed for me." Hey, go go take some flush headshots. Make this thing look look effing brutal, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of times, I mean, there's not that much. I mean, you can probably attest to this. There's not that much structure in an indie ma- in, in the ma'am in an indie wrestling match. Yeah. Versus what you get in WWE of people getting away with things. You know what I mean? No, I, yeah, I mean, definitely. all there really is, and and I not that I'm in on the talks, but I wow. you know, but I'm around it enough. I think I have the idea. Uh, you know, you go to a show and it says, uh, "Please no swearing, please no blood, please no no this, no no talk time without uh, approval. Please don't go over the guardrails." Uh, you know, like you get this little list of rules. You're not really told the rules, mm-hmm. or maybe a little bit, you know, generally. But then that's it. And it's like, oh, hey, make sure you do this, make sure you do this, do this. And then they're on their own, and they plan their match. You know, they don't yeah. have they don't have agents like in Raw in WWE that are planning the match with them and know the company lines of the do's and don'ts to make sure that these guys don't do them, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and, and There's very little some, I mean, depending on the match, if there's a certain story that needs to get across, but there's very little structured, like, on actual, like, matches. Uh, I know for Inspire, a lot of it is just, I, I, I will say word for word, it is, go out there and kill it. Usually, just go out there. Poor choice of words for tonight's uh, topic, but anyway, go out there, go out there and kill it. Don't kill each other, though. Yeah, exactly. Everybody come home safe. You know what I mean? And and, yeah, yeah, it's a big thing for the locker room. Hey, let's talk about real quick some indie wrestling going on. Uh, April third, I got this thing. Uh, Kevin Sullivan, Shane Douglas in Dayton for uh, RockstarProWrestling.com. Isn't this Mm. one? Wait a minute. Is this well, I think we talked about this once before. Yeah, well, I, I think so. Is this one that... I'm trying to think. Is this one that Pedro was talking about? No, Remix he was talking about. But he may have been at this one, too. Uh, but no, they look really interesting. RockstarProWrestling.com if you want to check them out. They got stuff on YouTube, Instagram, uh, all over the social media. But like I said... Uh, oh, Mathis. Uh, Rick Mathis, right? It, it, Ron Mathis. I'm sorry. Well, that's Ron, Ron Mathis, Mathis. Okay, who is yeah, freaking yeah. insane. I've seen him in a couple different things. I In the past year, I've seen him in RWA, JCW, and uh, the uh, DBI, which is a charity event in a church, mind you, where he took on Ricky Shane Page. Imagine how that went. Um, it was... <laughs> I believe he's a student of, uh, or was taken under the wing of uh, Sammy Callahan. Uh, I, I can Crow see one. that influence for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. But these guys, uh, awesome, awesome, uh, good stuff going on there. Um, this looks really interesting. They got uh, some some TV on. You can uh, amped weekly uh, is their show, uh, so you can check that Rock Bar, rockstarprowrestling.com. dot com. And uh, yeah, that's I mean that's press press release we got here. Um, from uh, the Nate Stein uh, uh, stuff we've been getting. Uh, anything else real big? RWA, uh, RWAlive.com, the rescheduled match. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Knuckles taking on uh, Nick Esteban Taylor in the uh, 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 intergender uh, false count. Anywhere, really, I'm still looking forward to that. I hope it holds up to two months of wait. Mm. <laughs> uh, some other special stuff going on. Uh, and, of course, um, Ryan Mitchell, another uh, friend of the show we've had on uh, on the Wrestling Mayhem show, at least he will be uh, uh, retiring. I guess uh, I know he had a, a, a injury, one of their round of injuries, and I think he got some bad news. Speaking of you know stuff we were talking about, uh, so uh, they're going to do a bit of a farewell there uh, at RWA. So you know he was he was a big cornerstone of that company over there. So sad to see him go. I uh, hope he has a, a pretty good farewell there. And, uh, they're not getting swerved. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't believe any. <laughs> I immediately don't believe anybody's entry ankle. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure this one's real from the conversations I personally had with him. But still, you never know. Fucking work shoots, man. Uh, you never Anytime's know. Anytime's a good time to show your appreciation of the wrestler, even if he's lying to you. So. Yeah, yeah, that makes you even more pissed when he comes out and is like, "No, I'm fine the whole time, guys." Oh God! Ah, no, look at me walking around. I don't need this cane. I don't know who's using a cane, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but still, um, but no, that's, that's you know, I'm bad with. It. I'm the one that said, "Oh, bear, wait, Barrett didn't get hurt. He just took a real simple bump to the barricade at that SmackDown." And like, I get, I get a thing from Labar. No, no, he really got hurt. I'm like, oh, fuck me. <laughs> 
Uh, but anyways, um, on that note, uh, anything else? Anything else of interest out there? Uh, I didn't. See uh, the, I guess the only thing is there is a couple of independent, independent wrestling events help happening uh, from WrestleMania weekend. Mm-hmm, of uh, course, uh, that are some cool stuff. Uh, I know WWN Live's doing a uh, whole weekend of stuff uh, uh, during WrestleMania in San Jose. The only one that I think really stuck out to me is the uh, the Shimmer event that's happening. Uh, I believe on Saturday, nice. uh, which is going to oh. be uh, a tournament as well. They're going to be holding a chick fight tournament uh, featuring uh, uh, 12 other uh, female wrestlers. Uh, the winner gets a Shimmer title shot, and it's a lot of really good names on there. Nice. Uh, and it's also available – all the events are available on iPay-Per-View at www.live.com. So if you're not going to be at WrestleMania, you can definitely uh, watch them there as well. Awesome. Hey, also a shout out pwxtv.com, also in the greater Pittsburgh area. Uh, mostly because I wanted to point out uh, a future returning friend of the show, Chris LaRusso, who's big, been making waves a little bit on Ring of Honor as of late. He's actually having a, a false count anywhere with uh, Gannon Jones Jr., who actually has been um, uh, really tearing it up in Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Uh, so that's going down. And we're going to have Chris LaRusso is scheduled to join us, I believe, in three weeks um here on this show and i think he's going to be in studio so uh looking forward to that I, i've run into him a few times here over over the last few years since we've had him on before and he's doing great stuff uh, he's really really coming around doing awesome stuff and, and getting involved with ring of honor and doing cool things in in, in those uh, couple of that he's around up here so all right if that's all if that's it uh, matt carlin do you have yeah, anything yeah. <laughs> Anything? Are you following the indie wrestling other than IWC? <laughs> oh, geez. I'm, I'm doing what I can, Sorg. I, I hear uh, Dalton Castle's doing real nice things in Ring of Honor. I'm going to have to go. Late. I haven't got this episode yet. What's going on there? Because when he did his um, uh, appearance in the Top Prospects tournament, his entrance gear was a sight to see. I saw a picture of it, and I'm so <laughs> excited. And I wish he would bring it to IWC, but I'm sure it's a Ring of Honor prop or whatever. So I, that's unfortunate uh but no he's going to be in meadville for iwc's night of the superstars which i'm sure we'll talk with justin Plummer about uh greatly next week on the show uh which is just getting bigger and bigger because they, they geez it's like it's like the people they announced for that show get a wwe rub immediately it's crazy, afterwards isn't it? it is nuts and, and this is the second year i think in a row that they've done stuff like this um, I mean, uh, Kevin Nash is there inducted in the Hall of Fame now announced this week. Rhino pops up on NXT and he's in the title match against Rhino, apparently because Logan Shulo was the victim on NXT. So apparently Rhino is uh, targeting IWC people in NXT. I thought you were going to say there was a um, there was a IWC heavyweight number one contenders match on nxt and no, one <laughs> it, no it was shulo was the other contender rhino exactly. won he's taking on tommy dreamer for the iwc heavyweight championship so right there you go uh but dalton castle rj city part of that as well uh evan Bourne, uh, uh matt slidell is there who's a he's an old he's an old alumni of iwc actually uh so good to see him returning uh, it's going to be a really fun show. Really, really fun show. That's April 11th, Meadville, PA. And we'll have the DVD, of course, at PittsburghWrestling.com. So I, I think that's it. Eamon, at Eamon2, please, on the Twitters, at MainstreamMatt1T. Check out it's MainstreamMatt.blogspot.com. Great stuff over there, including the Mayhem Media that we just wrapped up. Um, find our version of WrestleMania for this year. I'm at Sorgatron. So much going on. Mainstream... Uh, Mayhem Minute is my daily show, four days a week, talking some wrestling news and notes and thoughts. Uh, that we're putting at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. So much going on. Uh, Live.WrestlingMayhemShow.com about 11 p.m. Eastern or so. Uh, all the Facebooks and everything are linked at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. I'm just going to be with that. Uh, and please support the wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Beat for the taste of the blood. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron Media. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.